Hello, my name is Scott Serretta, Director of Education for the COPD Foundation. Thank you for joining today. We're going to talk about the Pocket Consultant Guide, and this is a tutorial on how to use the new app, which will be released in the first week of September. We're very excited as this is the first app that the COPD Foundation has produced. So let's first start off with an introduction to tell you a little bit about how to use this video. If you look in the lower right hand corner, you'll see an option to change the size of the screen video. And you'll also find a link for a table of contents. Please click on that button. What you'll notice now is a table of contents will appear on the left side of your screen. In the future, when you watch this tutorial, you can skip the introduction and the links page and you can go directly to the app tutorial itself. In the future, you can also come back to this and if you want to see the links in order to get to our community website page or the manuscript talking about the Pocket Consultant, you can go to that section in the video directly. So let's start off with the need. Why do we need a Pocket Consultant Guide? There are over 15 million Americans who have now been diagnosed with COPD. Evidence suggests that 12 million more have the disease but still remain undiagnosed. COPD is now the third leading cause of death and the second leading cause of disability in the United States. The challenges seem clear. We need to diagnose more than the 12 million undiagnosed. And we need to be sure that they're already diagnosed are correctly diagnosed. Lastly, we need to make sure that those correctly diagnosed are appropriately treated. There are a number of guidelines available for COPD management. However, the studies suggest that most patients with COPD are not receiving therapy, which is suggested by these guidelines. GOLD, ATS, ERS, and NICE are the guidelines most commonly quoted in publications, articles, journals, and research. All these are excellent providing a wealth of well-documented information. However, they are very long and difficult for the primary care provider to navigate through. Even the summary statements appear long, representing multiple pages, 15 page plus, rather than being small and compact that can be put inside the pocket. In hope of addressing this concern, the COPD Foundation has developed the Pocket Guide for COPD Diagnosis and Therapy. Three versions are currently available. We have a six panel version card which includes listing the medications with generic names. We have a six panel trade name version also. Same card, the only difference is trade name versus uh, generic names. The trade name cards are more common when healthcare professionals have the conversation with patients talking about the medications that they commonly use and prescribe and the names that are familiar to the patients. In addition, there is an app being produced right now and it will be available in Apple platform by the first week of September. We hope to offer an Android platform in the future, but it is not available now. An associated blog will also be launched on the COPD Foundation website, which allows healthcare professionals to provide their clinical input and general comments about future transformations of the COPD Pocket Consulting Guide. We highly encourage you to be a part of this community. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you do in practice that you think we should consider for changes on the Pocket Consulting Guide. Okay. I believe I've covered these topics here. Another thing that I would like to bring up and discuss is that our COPD uh, Pocket Consultant Community webpage, the link is located here. The foundation will be launching this Secure Pocket Consultant Guide online community and it will be attached to our COPD Foundation website. It's designed specifically for physicians and healthcare professionals to interact with one another and submit their questions and comments about the guide. Your conversations from this site will drive future updates of the COPD Pocket Consultant Guide. The next update will be scheduled for October. I want to point out some other important links. The top one here is the foundation treatment page. This is where we're going to locate the app to go directly to the app store and download. Right now you can uh, view this page and it talks a little bit about the pocket consulting guide and treatment. 
The Journal of COPD Manuscript is an in-depth look at the construction of the Pocket Consultant Guide, why we felt it was necessary to produce this product, and what we expect to see in the future. So you can read the entire man, uh, manuscript on the Journal of COPD. The Pocket Consultant cards can be downloaded in PDF format by going to this link located here. These are electronic PDFs. The Pocket Consultant Guide online order catalog is where you can go to order the printed cards. So you can order these for your facilities, pass them out to your colleagues, residents, healthcare professionals in your departments. We also encourage you to register for updates. Anytime there's an update made to the Pocket Consultant cards, we will automatically distribute these to you as a replacement consultant guide. The apps will automatically be updated as a new version comes out. If you have downloaded the app, you will get an update notification to download the newest version of the app. However, the cards themselves, the printed cards, you'll need to register in order to get those updates. And then lastly, we see the Pocket Consultant Community page. So I encourage you to go there, voice your opinion, tell us what you like, be a part of our community, and let your voice be heard. So let's take a look at the Pocket Consultant Guide mobile app. This is for iPhones currently. However, while it works on the iPhone, it's also compatible with other Apple products, including the iPad and the iPod Touch. I'm going to pull up the app so we can take a look at it. And when you first launch the app, what you're going to notice here is the disclaimer screen. This is a one-time screen. You're going to have to agree to this information. It says that the COPD Pocket Consultant Guide was created by the COPD Foundation and that there is copyright protection for this app. We're going to agree. The next screen is the home screen. There is a four-step process for completing this app. If you click on the instructions at the bottom located here, we'll take a look at that four-step instruction. We're going to select a dyspnea score. You can select either the COPD assessment test, known as CAT, or the Modified Medical Research Council dyspnea scale, breathlessness scale. This is how you score symptoms. The second thing we're going to need to do is input the post-bronchodilator spirometry results from the patient. The third thing, we're going to look at exacerbation history in the last 12 months. And then the fourth thing is we'll review the model and therapy chart. This therapy chart, based on the algorithm and the information you put in about the patient, will highlight certain sections telling you that uh, you should take action or consider those severity domains. So let's start with the COPD assessment test. We need to ask our patients these eight common questions about health status, and you're going to score them. So I'm just randomly going to select scores. And what you'll notice here is that you can skip a score, but you will need to come back to it. And then at the bottom of the screen, you'll notice there's an accumulative score. Right now we have 12. The last question I selected puts us at a score of 14. However, I missed a question. You can see you cannot advance the page. So you'll need to complete all questions before you can advance. And our total score is now a 16. Well, apparently I missed another question here. Now our total score is 18 and I can advance by clicking next. The second step we need to do is input post bronchodilator spirometry results. The FBC, this will come from a spirometry test, will randomly select and we'll select a ratio of 65 and we're going to select next. The, uh, Fourth, or third question we ask here, third step, is how many exacerbations has occurred in the last 12 months? We're going to select one and then select next. Now what happens is you get to the model page. Based on the information you inputted, you're going to get a highlight on SG0, SG1, 2, 3, or 4. 
So based on the information we inputted, we have an SG1, spirometry grade one, which is mild with an FEV1 entered above 60%, and we put in 65. What you'll notice here is the spirometry grade chart, again highlighting SG1. We discuss the seven severity domains, regular symptoms, exacerbations, oxygenation, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, comorbidities, all have significant roles with treatment and diagnosis. You'll also notice here that all patients should receive smoking cessation counseling, vaccination for influenza, pneumococcus, pertussis, and they should also be tested for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, the genetic form of COPD. When we get to the therapy chart, you'll notice a couple highlights. Spirometry grade one row is highlighted and the algorithm is that on the left side you'll find on the rows are the seven severity domains and at the top you will find the columns which represent recommended therapies. The pinwheel symbol recommends first line therapy and the target symbol recommends second line therapy. You'll also notice that each of these icons have some additional notations. You can tap on any icon in this therapy chart for additional information. So if we click on the pinwheel, you'll get a pop-up that says this is recommended first line therapy. And if we scroll a little bit lower, what you're going to notice here is that you get the uh, legend. The legend at the bottom of the therapy chart shows recommended first line therapy. The target is second line choices. We also identify each column, the Lama, Laba, Sabas, they're all spelled out on exactly what these things mean. And then you'll also see the legend at the bottom noting each of the notations. And lastly is our disclaimer. I do encourage you to take a look at the chart and do recognize that you can click on any of these to get additional information. If I click on this one here for emphysema, what you'll notice is second line therapy recommendation, but it's also recommended to perform LVRS in select cases with upper low predominant emphysema. So this is a very usable app. What we're going to do now is take a look at our all medications page. Under all medications, you'll see a list of all the medications corresponding to the columns in the therapy chart. You can also expand each of these by clicking on the plus symbol. It will give you additional information about duration of action, how the product comes, and what the solutions are available or the milligram equivalents. And then if we go to the start over page, this will allow you to clear your settings and start over with a new patient. This is recommended to get you right back to the beginning screen, where instead of filling out the CAT, you may choose you want to fill out the MMRC, where you would have to again select a score, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. The algorithm cutoff for more intense symptoms is set at 1. Those who score one or higher, you will get a highlight on the therapy chart saying regular symptoms should be considered. And then again, we go to the spirometry results. This is post bronchodilator. I'm going to put in different values here. Let's put in um, 65 FBC. We'll put in an FEV1 of 35%, a ratio of 61. Exacerbation score, let's put two or more. And as you can imagine, this is more intense. It is an SG2, which is moderate post bronchodilator FEV1 ratio below 70%, with a range of FEV1 indicating the severity between 30 and 60%. We highlight SG2, but most importantly, when you get to the therapy chart, you'll notice that you highlight SG23. You'll also highlight the regular symptoms and the exacerbation risk score is also high. These three highlighted areas are considerations for the uh, physician to consider for treatment. And then lastly, we're going to go to the more tab. The more tab gives you additional information about the COPD Foundation and our website. 
We also include the impact of smoking chart, which was removed in the last version of the pocket consultant guide because we added more information. We didn't have room to uh, place the impact of smoking chart. However, this is a great teaching tool to talk to your patients and motivate them for smoking cessation. We include additional links to our foundation website, our Drive for COPD campaign, Alpha One Foundation site. We also give additional information about the COPD assessment test, the MMRC score. We give you a link to order pocket consultant cards to download those cards in electronic forms and you can even register your card for an update. If we go back to the more tab, you'll get a link to the pocket consultant guide which is located on the journal of COPD, that's the manuscript. And then we can also link directly to our COPD community page where we would love to hear from you. Please be a part of this active community. And our next update will be in October of 2013. We will be looking at your feedback in order to make those changes. Thank you very much for joining us today with this tutorial. If you have any questions, please go back to the links page or contact me, Scott Sreda, at the COPD Foundation. Thank you very much.